All right, guys, see to Summit Cycling here. Man, I finally did it. I finally went to the dark side. The dark side of drop bars, skinny tires, and lycra. Yuck. Okay, no, but in all serious, this is my new bike. I hope you guys like it. This is the Felt Brome 60. So I picked this bike up about a month ago to start doing some commuting to work. I really had no interest in road biking at the time. I just wanted to kind of start riding to work. My wife was working some weird hours and with only having one car, it kind of made it difficult. So I did it a couple of times on my Trek 820. Uh, I averaged about 15 miles per hour. It was just insanely slow. So I went into my local bike shop to try and see what they could do. Uh, I took a couple of bikes out for a test ride and just kept getting drawn to this bike. Uh, slept on it for a couple nights, tried to do some research, and I just couldn't find any information on it. So that's kind of the purpose of this video. I think this is a great bike and I'm trying to bring that awareness to the cycling community because this bike really needs some notoriety. Uh, you can pick one of these guys up for 800 bucks, maybe a little more, maybe a little bit less depending on where you buy it. I know sometimes some local bike shops do a little bit of a markup. Um, but honestly, the value you're getting for that much is absolutely insane. This thing has components of way higher end bikes. Um, so this bike's classified as an adventure bike. So basically what that means is if you're wanting to solely road ride, this isn't going to be the bike you're going to get. If you're wanting to solely gravel ride, this will not be the bike for you. If you're wanting to go out on long tours and ride like the Transamerican, this will not be the bike for you. However, if you're wanting to do a little bit of all three of those things, some light touring, some gravel riding on the weekends, as well as some long endurance days in the saddle, this bike can comfortably do all three of those things. And aside from the touring, I can say that I personally have done all of those things. I've put this thing through some 20 mile gravel rides, no problem. I've done some 50 mile rides, no problem. This thing is great. So let's go and let's take a look at some of the components. I will list all the components full spec in the description. So if I stumble over something or you just want some specifics to look over, they will be there. So starting at the brake levers and shift levers, I guess in the roadie community, these are called the hoods. Uh, it's Shimano Claris. They're pretty nice. Uh, I don't really know how great the quality is. Um, like I said, being from a mountain bike background, some of these components are a little bit foreign to me, but I've rode this bike in the rain. I've rode it on gravel and I've had zero issues with braking. Um, I've had zero issues with my hands slipping on it. So they're okay in my book. Um, going to the grip tape, it's black with some reflective specks in it. That's pretty great if you're going to be night riding or in any amounts of, um, traffic at all. Moving on to the stem, honestly, I think the stem's a great feature. Uh, besides the fact that this bike comes with just a stack of spacers to kind of adjust it to your height, whether you want it slammed or whether you want it up, it's really able to be done for you. Um, so everybody knows that the stem can be flipped upside down to get negative drop, but one cool thing that this stem has is there's actually a little built-in spacer inside the stem itself. So if you look where it says plus eight, plus 12, plus 16, depending on how you turn that spacer, you can get up to 16 degrees of rise. Sorry, my camera will focus. You can actually see it at the bottom here. It's this one that you can see it angled up. I currently have it set to the plus 16 right now. Um, I have a lot of hills here. It just kind of works for me, but you know, not a lot of people want to mess with spacers. Not a lot of people want to cut a steerer tube. Not a lot of people want to invest money into a different stem. So that's kind of a nice feature that this bike has is to give you a little bit of wiggle room to dial in your ride to your personal style. Uh, moving down, it's got a generic branded felt like sealed headset. I like it. I mean, I'm not complaining. It definitely could be an FSA, but it does the job. This is probably one of the main features of the bike, the front fork. It's very aerodynamic and it's carbon fiber, so it's very, very light. I love it, it's great. Also, the front and rear wheel have through axles. That's also a pretty good feature, I love that. 
um, as we talked earlier, it's got disc brakes, they're Tektro, and front and rear 160 millimeter rotors. Um, again, I've rode in rain, I've rode in gravel. Um, no, these are not hydraulic mountain bike brakes, but they do the job. If you're gonna be road riding or doing some white gravel, especially if you put a little bit different tire on here for the gravel, for the road riding, you'd be fine. These brakes are fine. There's no reason to upgrade. You know, I mean, at least in my opinion, like I said again, coming from a mountain biking background, there's gonna be very few instances you're gonna to need to get on your brakes and like slide to a stop, like you're fine. So, sorry, I'm not trying to ramble, but I've had some people comment on the brakes that I've let ride this bike saying they weren't all that great, they're, they're fine. Um, it's got DeVoe double wall rims with Max's refused tires uh, and a 700C rim. The tires that come on it are 40 millimeters wide. This rim's capable of going down to a 35 and up to a 45. So kind of whether you're wanting to do gravel or whether you're wanting to do road riding or maybe some in, like endurance touring, you can kind of tailor the tire to you. You can't go super skinny, but like honestly, um, again, for me, 35 is pretty skinny. I probably wouldn't want to go much skinnier than that for the type of riding I do. Um, as you can see, it's got internal cable routing. Get those cables out of the elements. Keep it looking nice. Keep it looking clean. Um, it's got a spot for a front rack as well as a spot for a front fender. That's great if you're going to be touring. Great if you're going to be riding in the rain, which I get a lot of here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, honestly, I know this is a very, very simple part of the bike, but my absolute favorite part is a spot for all the water bottle or accessory mounts. So you have one on the top tube, one on the seat tube, and two on the down tube. So there's one on like sort of the inside of the triangle of the down tube, and then there's actually one below it. So there's a possible combination for four water bottles or four accessories, however you wanna mix it up, which I honestly just think is great. Um, as well, going back to the racks, it's got a spot for a rear rack as well as a rear fender so that's awesome again with the rain or if you're wanting to do any touring that's a must-have um, going into probably the most important of it the component like the components of the drivetrain that's like what most people want when they're buying a bike is good quality drivetrain components so again I don't know too much about Claris or Sora from Shimano but I did do a little bit of research on the FSA Tempo this Crank set alone is around $100. Uh, it's a two speed chain ring. So, if you think about it, the bike's an $800 bike when you have $100 alone in your crank set. Like, it's a good deal. You're getting a good bike. Um, it's your standard, like, intro level square taper sealed bottom bracket. I haven't had any creaks, I haven't had any issues so far, and I've got about 200 miles on the bike. Um, again, Shimano Claris front derailleur, Shimano Sora rear derailleur with an eight speed generic cassette in the rear. Um, to be perfectly honest with you guys, just because this is a review and even though I love the bike, I'm going to tell you how it is. I have had issues with the shifting on this bike. So if that's something that concerns you or maybe you just don't have the knowledge to work on bikes and that's not something that you want to like play around with um you know i wouldn't say don't look into getting this bike i definitely definitely recommend it it's a great bike maybe just think about having the local bike shop check it out or think about possibly upgrading that rear derailleur that's the one i've had issues with it skips on one of the gears no matter how much i try to adjust it um other than that the saddle's really nice um i mean i usually can't get comfortable on saddles no matter how good a quality they are but this one's a royal gel saddle so it's a nice gel comfortable saddle um yeah i mean this bike is great like i said i'll list the full specs down in the bottom 
and um, I'm curious to see what your guys' thoughts are on it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, have fun riding. I'll see you guys next time. Wherever love goes, there is also misery. It's no mystery.